In the following video, we're gonna discuss T cell maturation in thymus. So, what is thymus? It's one of your primary lymphoid organs, the other being the bone marrow. But one of the major differences is that the thymus does not last for your whole life. It actually starts to atrophy and becoming fatty in your early puberty or just prior to that. And we can ask ourselves the question, why? what could be the reason? One of the reasons can be is that this is essentially an evolutionary process. Just consider, when you're a kid, you're exposed to many pathogens and you don't care so much about your hygiene as you do when you're an adult. You're in a playground, you contaminate yourself with all dif different microbes. But as an adult, uh, you are more careful. And the human body has uh, noticed this throughout the centuries and therefore the need of thymus is less when you're an adult compared to when you're a child. So what is thymus? Thymus is actually a multi-lobulated uh, structure that is situated behind your sternum approximately at the level of second vertebra. These lobules have a cortex which is its outer part as you see in this histological picture it's more darkened and it's medulla the inner part and the maturation occurs from uh, from the cortical part towards the me medullary part the cells that are found in your thymus are the stromal cells that include the some dendritic cells cortical and medullary epithelial cells while the other group of cells are called thymocytes the cells of thymus once your T cells have left the bone marrow, they will start to migrate towards thymus, but they don't have any specific CD markers. CD stands for cluster of differentiation. Once they enter the thymus, the stromal cells will express their MHC molecules and expose these immature T cells to different antigens. Remember that MHC class 1 is found in all of your nucleated cells, with the exception of your red blood cells, while the MHC class 2 is found only in your antigen-presenting cells, which are your B lymphocytes, your dendritic cells, and your macrophages. In the thymus, your immature T cells undergo a selection. If the selection would be negative, then they are denied entering the rest of your circulation, and uh, which essentially means that they will commit cell suicide called apoptosis. But if they are positively selected, then they are good enough to enter your circulation and protect you. So how does this selection go? When the T cells uh, enter the thymus, all of these stromal cells will express the antigen through help of MHC. One of the factors that will determine if these will undergo a positive selection is that if they can recognize the MHC with its antigen, if they cannot, they will undergo apoptosis. If they can recognize the antigen, but they will bind too strong, essentially if they have a high affinity, then they will also undergo apoptosis. This is due to that this will increase the probability of the T cells becoming autoreactive, meaning that it can attack uh, your own tissue. So that's why we will get rid of them. But if they would bind with low affinity to the MHC with the antigen, then they will undergo a positive selection and they are good enough to enter our circulation. As you remember, I mentioned that pr uh, prior to entrance of the thymus, there are no CDs expressed on the T cells, but once they are in the thymus, depending on which MHC class they will prefer with a low affinity, this will determine if the uh, T cells will become CD8 cells, also called the cytotoxic T cells, or CD4 cells, also known as T helper cells. The MHC class 1 will help to generate more CD8 cells, while the MHC class 2 will help to de uh, generate CD4 cells. So how many of your T cells do you think will be positively selected? Actually only approximately 5%, meaning that the majority, more than 90-95%, will be negatively selected and therefore undergo apoptosis. So your thymus is quite selective when it chooses its T cells. And in the next few videos, we're going to individually talk about cytotoxic T-cells, T-helper cells, and the regulatory T-cells. Thanks for watching.